My dad needs two strippers for March 9th. He wants to pay them when they leave for them to do lesbian stuff and for them to try, try not to nickel and dime him. Are you able to help me with this? First of all, I love that I, people think that I'm the person to contact for the strip. Yeah, I love that you're the guy. Yeah. Oh. All right, welcome to another Modern Success Podcast, joined here by Albert. And this is gonna be a special episode because he's actually coming out of the closet. And we got Brandon, <laughs> we got Brandon here, uh, first time guest on the podcast. And I believe he's finally gonna admit that he's been juicing this whole time and it's not actually as natural as he leads us to believe. Carrot juice though, carrot it's, all, juice. it's all carrot juice, yeah. Okay. We're gonna get you tested. We're Keep gonna, it we're organic gonna and raw, you know what I'm saying? So for this one, I kind of want to get into a big thing that's been going on is this whole like idea of the friend zone and this dreaded friend zone the guys are scared about getting in they're being a nice guy they don't want to be friends or girls they don't want to be seen as a simp there's all these like reels and stuff i just keep getting and getting where guys are absolutely terrified to do anything other than try to sleep with women the moment they meet them sorry albert so i want to get your i want to get your views on this right the idea of befriending women or just the idea of having them in your life versus just going out solely to hook up well there's a difference right between getting friend zoned and being in a friend situation with women right like i think right. that if you're actually can be friends with a woman like i feel like you've done this really well is like you've had a lot of female friends and gotten like a really good behind the curtain like how they think how they act what they want type of situation so i do think from that perspective it's beneficial obviously yeah and i'm a firm believer by the way I think we should like recoin this whole fucking phrase because I think there's a big difference between a friend zone and a platonic zone. Like if you interesting, you, you ever see the show Friends? Right. They're all fucking everyone. Right. Right. So and they're all friends. Right. So I don't see any problem with being friends with a girl because right. we've I, I, we and you know me I've hooked up with my friends before, right? Yeah, we had that special night together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here got you. <laughs> so. I don't see any, I don't see any problem with that, but there is the issue of like a girl being like, oh, he's not sexual. Oh, right. You don't want to be a lamp. Exactly. Yeah. And you want to control your own frame. You don't want to be friend zoned when you don't want to be friend zoned. Right. Yeah. One of my mentors actually said this and I, I really liked it is there's a big difference between putting a girl in your friend zone and her putting you in hers because that could be a death trap. Well, I think that's like a really for the guys that are using the idea or considering if you're watching this and you're like a single guy and you're like, I need a f girls in my social circle in order to enhance my social value, then yeah, that makes sense. But I think the friend zone thing is interesting because it's like age relevant. Like okay. when I was 25, I didn't really have much like in common with girls to be friends with. I wanted to play video games. I right. wanted to watch sports. Like guys in their 20s shouldn't have female friends because as a male in your 20s, your activities don't align with what girls like. Guys, as we get older and we become adults, like, dude, when I was 25, my apartment was a disaster. I was, I was there. <laughs> now yeah. it's yeah. clean. <laughs> it's organized. I can I can relate with a woman. When I was 25, I couldn't relate with a woman. I was doing, I was playing beer pong and like, you know, fucking making fun of guys. And now I'm like, all right, I, I think as you become an adult, you can have female friends. Right. The only problem is like, it's a narrow window of like that adulthood becomes like marriage, and then you become, you don't even have female friends, you have couple friends. Right. So like right now we're gonna have a Super Bowl party coming up, and you got a message from somebody who's like a couple friend. Right. And in my head I'm like, how come she mentions Jared for the for the, uh, for the the Super Bowl party? Like, I'm definitely cooler than Jared. But then I realized Jared's <laughs> a couple, but so the couple friends- It's like a weird more. VIP club that like nobody wants to be in. Yeah, the couple. Like, it gets you into nothing. It, yeah. it gets you into yeah. absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, oh, you're a couple, you can come to like, Bagminton with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, like nobody oh, wants man. to be at these there. They start yeah. at eight, they end at ten thirty. Everyone's tired. Well, hold on. That part I'm I'm got, well maybe I'm You're on board old. with that. Yeah, yeah. I get more on board with that. But I've been dubbed the king of happy hour, by the way. It used to be You're like early. rage until six AM or whatever. Now I'm like happy hour. I, I I didn't know this was a thing until yeah. just recently. It's awesome. You're the day as soon as the sun goes down, like you're pretty much behind not too far behind it. Yeah, kind of, I mean I'm 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 making more of a push. So me and Anna, you know, my um, my significant other shout out at the Daily Flirt. Um, we're making a bigger push to go out more and be more social because I do think 
there is a trap with both of you. You know, I think on one end, you got you going to like six in the morning, literally just like nonstop out every night. Oh, yeah. you're, si- you're signing your life away if you agree to go out with Albert. You're like, oh, okay, like that, the next two days are like a wash. <laughs> but, on, but on the other end of the spectrum, we got Brandon where it's like, oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't do nothing. I right. am here. I will stay in. Right. And you I'm going to watch me. 90 sitcoms of the day. I yeah, die. you can't make me. Right. Like, yeah, so I'm like, I got to find a middle path between you fucks. Like, well, it's just becoming less enjoyable to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's just like, there's phases. There's, we were too young to have female friends to circle it back. Then there's that nice wheelhouse in the middle where it's like, we're the right age to have female friends. And then when you get a little too old, now everyone's coupled up and it's like, there's none of my friends that are married with two kids are like, I'm hanging out with my female friend. Like that's not well, yeah. part of their I, life. I think that we did a little bit of the the friends thing with like we had girls yeah, that, that we were hanging around yeah, with. Yeah. That- so we have friends that we used to hang out with, yeah. you know, female friends right. all the time. And there's drunken nights and things happen and whatever. Right. But I do think that we were good enough friends that we got that like behind the curtain, like not only like what women want and what they're like interested in, but like got comfortable being around women, which is why I know that you right. always push your students to like be friends with women and get used to being around women. Like, I feel like that's a big problem. It's like, I want to go out there and sleep with women or, or meet women or attract women. And it's like, dude, you're not even comfortable fucking talking to the waitress. Like you're not even comfortable just being around women. Yeah. It's like, I look at it like guys meet girls, Jarrett. And it's like, Hey, you're a girl. I'm a guy. And they get like all excited. And then they're like, can we have a relationship or hook up? And she's like, no, I, the best I can offer is like friendship. It's like right. you want the key restaurant at a table, well, and they're like, classic. "Yeah, I was saying like," and they're, they're like, "We can't give you the rest, the good table, but I can seat you at the bar." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's being friends with the girls, as opposed to my point is like what you're saying is as opposed to being like, "I want to shoot for dating or hooking up or a relationship, and I'm going to settle for friendship." Is sometimes be like, "I'm okay just pursuing friendship only," as the guy, right? Being the guy that says friendship is fine as a destination. I think how I stumbled into it, other than, you know, I had mentors who were like, yo, it's cool having girls around. I'm like, you know what, you're onto something. Um, was it's kind of like the Native American mindset where it's like, I'm going to use every piece of the buffalo. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to let anything go to waste. Like, if a girl rejects me and it's like, we should be friends, I'm like, I can use this, right? Like, yeah. there's, there's something here. And I saw three powerful things that you kind of touched on. Number one is I realized my entire understanding of women solely came from like pickup books or YouTube or whatever and seeing them out in the club, seeing the big titty coked up girl in the club with all the makeup who thinks her shit don't stink. And I'm like, and that's kind of fucks with you as a guy. If you're like, that's my only understanding of women is these reels I'm watching and seeing them in a club, right? Right. So being around them, I'm like, oh, they do fart. Oh, they can be gross. Oh, they can be goofy. It humanizes them. Yeah. Humanize. So that was number one. The, The second thing was I lo- was learning. I'm like, I'm seeing who they're dating. I'm like, oh shit, okay, like this is a hot girl I wanna be with. Granted, she friend zoned me, top platonic zoned me, right? I've got no shot, let's say. But I'm like, I'm seeing who she's getting with, I'm seeing what she says, but also what she actually responds to. And it's like, wow, I'm getting like an inside scoop, like doing like a secret documentary. And I'm like, I can actually see well, what's working, what's on not. On the flip side of that, where you're saying that you're only seeing like these extreme versions of women I feel like men think that it's the similar thing on the other side where like if you're not walking around looking like Henry Cavill, like you've got no shot, but like hanging around women and you hear like one of your female friends be like, oh my God, that guy's hot. And, and you're like, what? Like yeah. that fucking guy? That, like that guy? That guy right that fucking me, there? That blows me away. That blows, blows me away. And, and 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 we're going to tackle like this in a second. No, I'm saying yeah. I think that like really gives you an insight of like, dude, I'm fucking way better than that guy. Yeah. Automatic fucking self-esteem boost. Just a normal fucking dude over there. And it's like, I think that we get that in our heads the same way that we see the hot girl at the club. Like we assume women want the movie star Ryan Gosling, right. Ryan Reynolds, whatever. Like, and it's not the case at all. It's like, no, nah, that guy you know, picked up the waitress's pen. He's a really good person. That's attractive. Right. I, I, I want to circle back and ask you some stuff on that because that's a great point. Um, the third biggest tactical thing, and I think we, had, honestly, I was preaching this back when we were all living together in Monkey Jungle days, but we could have leveraged this a lot more. We kind of did this a little bit, but the actual tactical advantage of going out and having women around you, the whole pre-selection thing. Number one, obviously it makes you look good. Like, so other women are like, yo, who's that guy? Number two, I believe, and I think we debated this at one point, but I believe birds of a feather flock together. Hot girls are with hot girls, ugly girls with ugly girls to a rain. I mean, there's like right. always maybe like the, 
right. fat Betty of the group or so, you know, but like who just slipped in there since middle school. But like there's a, usually models are with models and, and whatnot, right? So it's lifestyles with lifestyle, right? People who like to be active and work out and like care about yes. their looks are with those types yes. of people. So I'm like, if I can, maybe I can't hook up with her or date her, but I could befriend her. Right. And now I'm in and then they're introducing me and I'm like, you know, that Seinfeld episode, George Costanza with yeah, the... Yeah, with the picture, yeah. It's like that. It's like you get access to a coach. So now I'm getting introduced to hotter girls. I'm getting pre-selected. And then the idea of the social currency. So like when I was in San Diego with, um, you know, shout out to my uh, friend Drew, you know, he's a promoter out there. You know, I would be able to bring out like six to 10 girls on his list. And he's like, oh, I got you. Party bus, got you. Mansion party, got you. You want to be at the DJ uh, table of Omnia, the hottest club here? got you free and i'm like this table alone is like ten thousand dollars at the time this is like my entire net worth right and i'm getting it every week because i could bring girls right. around and most guys can't do that you're the guy right yeah so there's a that's a massive tactical advantage 100 percent. and i think it's like psychologically just to kind of anchor his point a little bit it's like there's this weird taboo nature about hot girls. It's like I always talk about like in the life of a hot girl, they always walk through silence because we'd be sitting at a coffee shop and a hot girl walks by and everyone just kind of looks at them. Right. I, remember, I, I like this story, yeah. I, that's, I really believe that. And I still see it now with guys, male friends of mine who are like, oh, you're not going to believe this. I hooked up with this girl. I'm like, of course you can believe it. It's standard to me. But I think it only becomes standard. You lose the awe of hot girls when you're around enough of them. So having hot girls in your friend, like I actually have, attractive women that I'm just friends with now that I don't have any interest with. And I think being around them makes me, this is what I think is important, Jared, is makes me value just physical looks a little bit less, which I think makes me less thirsty and less needy around girls. Right. So when I see a hot girl, I'm not like, oh my God, it's a hot girl. Like I'm not treating it like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, it's just another person that I'm around people like this all of the time it's exposure therapy yeah. it's exposure well, and i know that you've brought up i've heard you know your some of your coaching calls where you mentioned like you know talk shit with the uh with the cashier and with the waitress and with the bartender oh, yeah. and then it doesn't really matter if it's a hot girl or if it's a Everybody's fucking dude i'm, I'm Everybody's still just the same. busting balls with the cashier with the person at the bar with the you know waiter waitress whatever it's second nature to me well in cold approach and what jerry's talking about and going out and doing stuff that was the big barrier for me, and I think it is for a lot of guys, where I can be like, okay, go talk to this girl, and if they aren't intimidated by her, the guy's game's good. But all of a sudden, get that hotter girl, the bite, the, our butthole tightens up a little bit, yeah. we get a little nervous, and then our game changes. So you have to be able to just talk to the hot girl the same you would as any girl. I feel like if you can get eight words out to like anybody, like you're off to a good start. Like If you can open your mouth and say eight words, like you can talk to anybody. And, and a big point, and I make this with Brent, a lot is uh, you can't overvalue looks. Right. You can't see a girl that, oh my God, I'm so attracted to this girl and get so excited about her mentally, put her on a pedestal. You have to literally be like, okay, cool. She looks great. I know a zillion girls that look great. What is she like? Is she cool? Does she have a personality? Does she get now, I know that's good to like say in the logic and it sounds cool. I want to ask you guys if you've had this phenomenon because I had Casey uh, from uh, Fuckboy Island on the, on the, on the show earlier. And he, both of us brought up a good point. I was like, oh my God, you're not, I'm not the only one. And he kind of talked about this too, is that when you get, um, let's not talk about our body counts because for obvious reason, but when you get to a certain level, you know, when you get to a certain level and you've been with a certain amount of women, especially high, like hot ones, high quality ones, I found, and so did he, I'm curious what you guys feel, like your actual, what you become attracted to changes almost like it start you start getting attracted like a girl does where like yeah looks are great but i also want this but i also want that like th it's more than just oh big tits now i'm attracted yeah. it was like actually Huge. like this is what it's like being a girl like i'm like looking at different women and going oh i don't know and like yeah sure you're pretty but oh you're annoying and i'm like it it morphs right like in the beginning 100%. it wasn't like that it was like a cr cr like a horny crazed teenager yeah no, and it morphed yeah, 100%. Like, there's different characteristics that you look for, and then there's different characteristics that completely turn you off. Uh, Albert and I were talking about this the other day. When I was single, there was a girl that I was talking to, uh, just like whatever, and she mentioned that I make too many dad jokes. Oof. And I was like, well, that's my, I was like, that's my whole personality. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you fucking suck. And so, it? obviously, from there, I continue to make nonstop puns and dad jokes. But, like, something like that for me is like literally a non starter. Like, literally, that girl was like, 
I was like, okay, like attractive, cute, you know, seems to be bubbly. And then I was like dead to me, like dead to me. So I think there's more of those, more things that are like unattractive than can actually get me to attractive as a guy. But like definitely as I've gotten older, more things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I actually, looks now can, can work as a negative for me. Oh yeah. Like when I first started, I'd be like, I just want like a 10 supermodel. No. If a girl's too hot, it's like a, like carrying a lot of groceries when you have like a far apartment. It's, it's like, it's like, a, it's just a handful. Like I what am I going to do with her? This? And I'm like, everything about this person is how she looks. I'm like, I, I don't want a super hot girl. I want like a really cute kind of hot girl who's super cool, super brains, like 100%. works all the time, understands the jokes, never like, you never say a joke and she's like, huh? Like that's like, I'm dead. Like I literally would rather kill myself than be with a girl that's like that. So I think, but again, Jared, like you said, it's an exposure therapy thing. You have to like earn that mentality because when you're a guy who doesn't have much success with women, like that's the metric. Oh, yeah, I got with you're a hot selector. girl. You're the I got with a hot yeah. girl. That's the metric that matters. But the metrics change as you grow and, and, and I don't know, build. Everybody who wants to get tens wants to get tens till they get them and then they want to get eights. <laughs> yes, that's right. kind of like yeah. a common theme I've seen again and again yeah. and again. It's just irresponsible. Thankfully, like, I got an, a, a 10. I got a 10 with an A personality, so shout out to I feel like having a 10 is literally like being Mike Tyson and you're like, I want to get a tiger. And it's just like, like <laughs> you don't even understand like what this thing eats and how to like take like, care of it. You understand the upkeep. And honestly, honestly, si similar, like likely to kill you in your sleep. I just feel like the- like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like having an army tank as your daily driver yeah, car. Yeah, it's, it's like, just, where am I going to park this like, thing? How am I going to get the oil change? Yeah. It seems super yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, the clearance in my garage is only yay high and I got a tank. <laughs> it really is so much maintenance. Like it just goes involved with the whole operation of this. You got to do with every single person hitting on that girl. Every yeah. single person. If you leave a a, for a minute, you're like, honey, which sour cream do you want to use? And it's like literally like somebody's going to be hitting on her. Yeah. I happened in front of me. I remember the, this girl like Tiffany and um, uh, I was day around like in Vegas or whatever. And she was like a girl that apparently Leonardo DiCaprio got with at times, all this shit. And I remember you like- You are not as good as Leonardo DiCaprio. I, yeah. yeah. So so it's right. instantly, instant. We well, want to talk about behind the curtain. You're like, oh, she doesn't want Henry Cavill. She wants a normal guy. Complete opposite. Yeah. She so, you know, literally probably got with Henry Cavill like- Unbelievable. I just know literally in front of me, guys would be like, come to our table, come to our table. I'm there. I'm like, I don't know what you expect. I'm with her, but they don't care. They're just like, like, got to have You didn't see it, but guaranteed somebody offered that person, that girl money behind your back to tell that guy to fuck off. They're like, hey, you distract him over here with a puppet. I'm going to go to like, yeah, 100%. Well, this is where I come off the rails is I'm on the other side of this. I actually do want a girl that's still like getting hit on all the time. No, you're worried about that. No, no, no. We're not saying in front of no, no, no. While you're there, no. I, I am. You think that I'm different. I actually am okay with it. I'm just saying, every second of every day, yep. celebrities, uh, mm -hmm. athletes, you want them sliding into her DM every day, all the time. Yeah. So then you do want you. You don't want an eight. You that's want what, a tap. That's why I'm a little broken in the. Brain. Yeah. No, no, you're 100 percent broken. Yeah. Because I nobody nobody's chasing eights like uh that are celebrities and athletes and whatever. I'd be surprised. It's like Derek Jeter's really slumming at the Yeah. End. Like, <laughs> He's married. I don't know. I can't believe you're oh, still yeah, single. Stop it. I can't believe you're still single. Yeah, it's it's a mystery. Yeah, well, all it's right, here, next point. He's like, I'm an eight that gets chased by a 10 and treats me like I'm a 13. What am I settling down? Yeah. Does fire just get hotter or is it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm open. He just said he'll we'll settle down. This is, oh, yeah. He can find a humble oh, eight you. who gets treated like she's a 10, chased after like she's an 11, but thinks she's a five. That's what he wants. Easy. So you just yeah. can't do math. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what we're really. No, he's over here for. counting on his fingers and toes. He goes ten and then eight and then you stand <laughs> yeah. over here, Jared, with your flip flops. Well, I didn't tell you this, Jared, but twenty twenty four, I'm making the official statement to the press and letting everyone know twenty twenty four is the year that I'm finding a wife. Wow. Oh, okay. yeah. that's the year. We're ready. We're open. We're taking all I'd comers. I'd so down if this wasn't a declaration every year. 2024 <laughs> is our year. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like Trump. It's like, cue, cue, cue the footage of like 2023. Alpha's like, this is 2022. <laughs> you know what I'm like? It's, do you remember the, you might not know this, but you're more into politics, is when George Bush Sr. said, read my lips, no more taxes. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I was like, a, he's like, no more taxes. And the next year, they're like, there's still taxes. There's, there's, yeah. We got to have a little bit of taxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, read my Solve. lips, no more taxes. Yeah. 2024 is the year I'm going to find a wife. I think this is the year I'm going to do it. I feel it. I can feel it in the year. All right. Well, we'll, we touched on this. Again, also, I'm 39, so I'm panicking. <laughs> <laughs> Sheer panic going on. Sheer panic. Although we have it better. I mean, I feel like this, I've read somewhere the sexual dating market, like men had sexual peak or dating market value are like 35 and women are 24. Well, I just think so he's going to. on the decline. He's on the incline. This is going to be controversial, but 
Let's make the podcast good. Right. I just came up with a new theory in the last two months. All right, let's go. So I've been holding out, 38, never been married. Um, always like, man, I'm going to hold out. And I always use this, and I would say this on dates, and I really, Jared, I really believed it. I go, I don't want to be one of these people that gets married and then gets divorced and they got to start over. But I think now, I think I'm just looking for a nice 10-year contract. <laughs> I'm looking for a first wife. You want a lease? Yeah, I'm going to do yeah. a one first wife from like 38 to 48. We'll shake hands. We'll have a kid or two. It's like, think about when you get a dog. Like, you know your dog is going to last 10, 12 years max. Right. People still buy dogs. And I never, I, in my head, I'm like, I will never buy a dog because I know that I'm going to have to put it down one day. But I think I'm going to do that with my first wife because I just, they're going to put her down. And you guys, an <laughs> he, go, he goes, listen, we've had our time. <laughs> Euthanization. And we've had a good run. I feel like I'm, at least for the next 10 years, see what happens, then see where I'm at when I'm 40. I feel like it's kind of like, it's really fucked up to say but so, i feel like that's a common thing it's like every man or every successful man has like two loves so, of their life so here's the no. first love and then when it hit 50 and then but, the but here's the most up. important thing hold on hold on hold i on. mean i'm looking for the forever one but i don't know if i'm gonna find her in time guys and i want to get most, some kids going back to me this is the most important thing do we then change the vows do you take this woman for a short period of time yeah it's like a, it's yeah. like a, a major league baseball deal they're yeah. like they just signed 13 years yeah. 200 million it's kind of ridiculous that you have to sign a lifelong contract a usually life other contract? contracts a have life deal yeah usually there should be some stipulations like hey let's have a quarterly review yeah or till, till, till right? death or difference of opinion do you part yeah it's like in a curb your enthusiasm when he goes uh till death do you part she's like are you still gonna love me after you die he goes He's like yeah, it's not with the concept <laughs> i got <laughs> Yeah. I got some angel poon when I like yeah. I did my time. I did That's that. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm going to maybe go for like a nice 10 to 15 year contract and then see what happens. Or so here's, okay, so here's another controversial thing. So a lot of times, you know, I'm always talking about the red pill movement, the incel movement, MIG toes, black pills. Did you say Ming toes? MIG toes. MIG toes. Men what? going the, the other way. M-G-T-O-W. It's men who are like, we're done with women. We don't need them anymore. I'm just going to. I'm just going to have to do. just going to hang out with the bros? It's. It's unreal. The passport bros. Have you heard of this? No. Okay. So this whole movement out TSA. there. It's called TSA. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So there's all these movements of basically some way, shape, or form, these like women hating, like hating Western society, <clears throat> hating women, hating the other concept. They're, How they're many blaming... men make up a movement, by the way? Is, it, is eight guys a movement? No, no. This is- That's just an angry this group. This is big. This is like- Thousands are, of people are-, are uh, uh, Hundreds of thousands. Are, are Ming toes. They're hundreds of thousands are toes. toes. Yeah. They're just toes. Incels. The incels are big. Is that part of all, all the shooters are incels. So incels want women- but they can't get it, and they blame women that they can't get them. Migtoes are like, we can't get women. Are and all Dungeons and Dragons players uh, incels? <laughs> it's just kind of. Yeah. I got out think, of it. Think, in your terms, this is how you understand it. Think of the movie Major League. Yeah, you know, yeah. All the fans, when they really turn on the team, and he yeah. starts mild thing, those yeah. are the Migtoes. So they want to enjoy the game, but they can't. Yeah, they, right. they love but the team incels. so much, but the team yeah. sucks, and they start to hate the team. Migtoes yeah. are like, I give up. I, no more space ball. Yeah, they're like, I refuse to the walk. truck. Yeah. We're going back, right? <laughs> yeah. Then you got the red pills who are like, we can get them, but they're scum, they're bitches, whatever. Women suck, but we'll get them by, because we have the secret truth. And you know what our secret truth is as a red pill? Get jacked and make money. I'm like, oh, that's a crazy secret that had to be announced or whatever. Anyway, so there's all everybody, passport bros. They're like, we want to get women, but... America sucks, so we're gonna fly to Nicaragua, Croatia, or some third world oh, the country. Night, the fiance people, well, kind, of, well, kind of, but they were like, we're gonna fly to another country, the Bali or whatever, and we're gonna get women there because they're not corrupted. Like, so there's all these different movements on this. It's really crazy. It's my that's, least, that's my least favorite one, I think. There's all these crazy stuff. Mentioned. So, <laughs> <laughs> one one aspect. No foreigners. Well, okay, I got two questions for you. So I'll, yeah. I'll start with the one I want to look back to. One aspect of the red pill is essentially. Listen, women, they just want the chat. It's a big, crazy, jacked up juice guys. My name's Brandon. Or they want <laughs> like he's right here. Or, or they want uh the guys who are like the sugar daddies. That's all they care about is the money and being and, and being simped over and all that stuff. So like where do you guys feel the truth of that is or where that money the money on looks argument essentially? All regional. Okay. That's, oh Brandon, what's my favorite phrase? I know I feel like I'm in the wrong market. I, I think it's all regional. I think in South Florida, where we live, or LA, or New York, it's red pillish, transactional dating. It's the OnlyFans girl and the fifty-five-year-old disgusting guy who, like, just you know, wants to wind him and dine him, and it's a transaction. I think in rural Kentucky, it's your high school sweetheart, and I think in like, it just depends on where you are in the country or in. So, the world. so I, I kind of felt like you were going to ask something similar to this question and what i came up with is 
you need to do a self pros and cons list, right? And maybe this doesn't completely answer your question. Maybe it's off topic, but you have to do a self pros and cons list. And for every con, you got to go try to put something in a pro. So if you're short and you're really into Magic the Gathering and you don't have a lot of social skills. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then you need to be jacked, Fuck. make money, and yeah. funny. Yeah. But if you don't have as many negatives, you can get away with less positives. But those are like what I'm going to call now like the equalizers, right? Like you weren't born with them. You can kind of like acquire them and you can go after them. And maybe money is – I actually think money is a bad one. I think it's success because you can be uh, – an Olympic champion and broke as hell, but you're attractive, right? Because you're successful. Right. You, you can be running the most uh, successful charity on the planet, but you live in a one-bedroom apartment. So I think it's success, humor, and um, what did I say? Success, humor. And one of the other ones. And one of the other ones. Right. Physical. And, physical, and, physical, and physical appearance and getting in shape. So those are like the equalizers. So for every negative, you got to go get one of those positives. Okay, so then how do you explain a situation like, because you guys knew me back in the day. I mean, you guys are both, you know, have the athletic background and blah, 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 so maybe bad argument here. But you can, you can testify, correct me if I'm wrong, I did not make good money. You know, in my 20s, I was not a millionaire. Disagree, or actually. Or Disagree. What? For your age, I actually think you made good money. Just for the sake of the argument. Wait, I mean, hear him out, hear him out. Go ahead, go ahead. For the Compared sake of money. to you, yeah. I mean, you were like basically sucking dick under bridges for a sandwich so yeah, like that's a that's a passion of mine that's different <laughs> i love sandwiches and i love whatever but let's go okay so like i'm talking to guys now when i say making money i mean they're making like six to seven figures all right but that's okay good so, so, you know, let, yeah, let them figure yeah, all right all right let's put it the other way in my 20s i was not making six or seven figures correct I, okay so i'm not like balling or some shit right mm -hmm. like where any girl's like i'm with him for his money mm -hmm. i don't remember any girl being like i want to be with jared for his money personally right number two i was like literally not like oh like you know hyperbole i was literally obese like bmi scale ob like fat obese whatever okay uh big head whatever you want to say not super tall average height you know whatever yet i was still getting success i was still keeping up with you guys i was still keeping up with amber crombie models other like amazing Ever. uh pick pickup coaches or dating coach whatever i was you know keeping in the ball you know in the ballpark with, with it so how does that make sense if this red pill thing is where it's like, no, you just got to be some super. And I was a dork on top of it. I was, I was very like obvious that, yeah, I'm a fucking nerd. So how does that make sense in the realm of you got to be some ultra masculine Chad gorilla guy? All right. I'll, I'll tell you this. Cause I have this argument a lot with people. I have a lot of wealthy friends who know what we do at and Modern Success. A lot of wealthy guys who suck at this shit. Oh, and they're all like, oh, ow, why do these guys need to learn these skills? Like, you just have to have a lot of money. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because- Have you seen you? I do believe <laughs> I do believe that after everything, high level aptitude with social skills trumps everything. Yes. I remember Brent said one incredible statement the other day, or I forgot what he said, but he's like, I'd rather have all these skills than like, he said like 50 million or some, some crazy number or something like that. And I'm like, and at the time I was like, I think Brent's wrong, but I'm like, especially in the last year where I've delved into like my own style of coaching, I think that like the game that you and I came into, like when we first started can get you some success for sure to part, regardless of how you look, but the game, how it's evolving now and the shit that I feel like I'm teaching and working with guys, it's like worth so much more. It's like that trumps everything. Cause it's not like I'm not teaching them like lines and say this and say that I'm like teaching them like next level awareness. Stuff. Well, you know why it's more important now is it's, easier than ever to fake wealth and success right so and, i feel like that gets lost in the shuffle of well, like yeah we get it you're another entrepreneur and, and you do airbnb and you right. do the the car hacking or whatever like everybody's and a social fucking skills if you look at it at a chart like he'll he can probably tell you this, if you look at a chart of like just general population people's social skills are doing this and i think in the last five years is the first time this kind of started oh, down because everyone's communicating on the internet their right. dating apps right their dms their t texting so like the idea of like being good in a social setting is actually going down now so if you're there's less even opportunities for it honestly there's less it's opportunities weird. so if you're socially an outlier i think that that carries so much more weight now than ever have you guys ever done this experiment by the way have you ever just driven around in like a supercar like a lamborghini or yeah, i have never never have Okay, so I, I challenge everyone watching this to do that. Anyone who's like, oh, it's all about the look, or it's all about the money and the flash and the car. It is not a chick magnet. It is a dick magnet. It's a dick magnet. Yeah. 
And that says everything. Like the girls are like, hey, what's up? Or like checking me out. Like I've been in it many times, like tons of Lamborghinis, not mine, sadly, but like tons of Lamborghinis with friends, or whatever. And every time, like clockwork, guys will come out, take pictures. They're like looking over, they're craning their necks, whatever. Women, not, same thing with the gym, I'm assuming, right? You get jacked, you get 225, bent fresh for the first time. All these guys congratulate you. Oh, yeah. And in, in the manual, they're like, uh, every girl's going to come up and want to like squeeze your bicep. It's just dudes just grabbing you in the ass. Right. Like, it's, so I'm like, so I'm not saying stop, but yeah. Guys are impressed with it. And I think that's what the Red Bull plays on because to guys, it's like, that's amazing. But the only people I find who are like, women just want money are the guys who don't have money. No, 100%. Right. And, and that's why I, I specifically wanted to mention like the success and not the money. Cause like, I feel like women are attracted to, success and ambition yes. and drive and purpose yes and right. like what you might do is mostly irrelevant and how much money you make is mostly irrelevant it's like he's passionate and he's driven and he like wakes up every day depends on the age but yeah but you know what i'm saying younger like, girls like that more. the girls that you <clears throat> probably want the girl that you probably want to be in a relationship here's in their 20s not girls in their 20s generally a little third uh, i'm saying a girl who doesn't want to be a sugar baby and specifically like it's gonna take of. a team of scientists to figure out what the fuck albert wants we already went through it it's easy math oh yeah Goodwill hunting, Thanks, no yes. problem. Calculus. No, I agree. I agree with what you're saying, Jared. Like Neil Brennan, the great Neil Brennan, who created the created Chappelle Show, and great comedian, says he goes gold diggers. Let's talk about it. And he goes, he'd be honest with you, I got a little gold and hasn't been that much digging. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, it's not what they're cracked up to be. Where are the diggers? Yeah, I wanna. Yeah, yeah. I need some digging over it. Um, here's a controversial topic I see brought up again, and again with the Red Bull stuff. And I'm a, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to give my opinion to that because I'm a little torn on the whole thing. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Natalie and Berglia. What? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. one. <laughs> okay. Um, see, that's where we have female friends now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> marriage. Is there a point to it anymore? Is it? Is there? Should guys get married? You're like, that's all you're like, war. What's what that? Is it you need me in the other room? <laughs> yeah, he's like, war. What is it good for? Yeah. Uh, is there a point uh, to marriage? So, yeah. Like, is there a point? Because as, as, like, they bring that up a lot. Like, what? value do men have getting married anymore what is the point of marriage for guys you want to know it's really easy okay. it's really really easy women want it that's it so if you want a normal relationship with a normal woman you have to be open to marriage easy men are always trying to figure out what women want marriage is at the top do you of know the why list. you know why they want that because so they can post the ring on instagram they can have the wedding and the dress they can compare and contrast. I will say, so I used to, I used to be very much that way, and I'm still big on it. Right, it's still big on the checklist stuff. But I will say, <laughs> you don't hear a lot of people, like, like you. Let me know if I'm wrong. You guys, let me know if I'm wrong. You don't hear a lot of boyfriend and girlfriends going to counseling to make things work. But you hear marriage counseling, right? So it definitely does cause a lot higher level of commitment. And a lot less escape hatches. So I do think that from that thing, it's like we're agreeing that we're working on this until it like possibly can't work. Like it's like a car that you're like, this is our car. So we're going to take care of it and we're going to change the oil and we're going to make sure that we wash it. It's not on a lease anymore. And so like it's a little bit different. I used to be much more on your side of like, fuck it. It's like a whole scam for taxes and the government and you know, women want to post stuff and it's a checklist, but you really don't hear of boyfriend and girlfriend counseling and you do hear of marriage counseling. So there has to be some higher level of commitment going on. So I would look at it like this, Jared, and I don't know, I don't know why this, I mean, this thought just came to me, but like <laughs> male to female relationships to me, the way I look at it is like the female starts with the football, <laughs> right? Oh and the God. guy starts is with a commercial and the, <laughs> no female starts with a football in her hands. And the guy just starts running after her and right. just chasing her. And the girl's just trying to get away from him, get away from him. And eventually when the guy gets her and takes the he football, gets the football. It sounds now so not he PC. tries to get away. And now the girl's like, no, don't get away. You've got the football. Right. Like, right. I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, let's keep it's, away. It's like the guy's always chasing the girl until commitment happens. And then the, it's like the guy now wants to leave the commitment. The girl's like, no, 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 not, I'm right. chasing you now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, for some reason, physiologically, that's what happens. It's like guys pursue women, and then when they finally get them, they're like, well, how about that one over there? And the girl's like, no, 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 I want this one. I let you pursue and win me. And it's like the weird, that's like a weird thing, and I don't know why it is. But yeah, but you're, you're waiting for the person that you're like running in the same direction, right? You're running towards each other, and then you're running towards each other, and you stay together. 
And yeah, that's that, why it only happens 50% of 50% of 50% of the time or whatever the metric is from like your normal relationship to marriage. <laughs> and then once you're married, even right. staying together then. Yeah. But do you see, I mean, do the pros outweigh the cons then? Is this something like we feel monogamy is dead? Do we feel the marriage system is Again, bad it, for guys? Is if it, you is... want women and you're like, I'm not going to get married, then you just throw away 90% of the women. Well, I also think that it's kind of, to, to I think to answer his question is like it's like the mystery thing like this guy Eric von Markovich who we refer to as mystery in like the p old pickup circles had this whole thing about like replication right where it's like in intrinsically in human beings we have like the need to like create a family defend our family create children pass along our genes I think that that plays a role in like how humans are wired and that's why marriage will always exist because of that, I think. Well, marriage initially was just a was a joining of houses. families. It was right. joining of houses. It was just a way of like, yeah. hey. It was, was mostly political, honestly. It was, no, it was, yeah. it was completely, a tra it wasn't actually until the 1700s that love had anything to really do with it. Like if you love someone, but your father was like, no, you, we need alliance with that house. I need those goats. I need right. that land. You're shit out of luck. Like, I love an alliance. Love had goats. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> love had That's not okay. not their ships. I really need the goats. Not their ships or their land. He's like those goats. Fucking plow that field. Well, they only. I mean, <laughs> it depended on what the guy needed. It was times of peace. I don't know, but 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 it wasn't until the 1700s that the whole like concept of love got in with marriage. It wasn't even until the 1930s that diamond rings had anything to do with proposing and became a marketable. It really thing. got us with right. that one. It really did. I mean, like so the years, whole that whole really concept kept exploring there's all these things of like does monogamy even work at, at our level and and is it, is it something we have to grow as a society or are we prepared for that and is it and, and my honest thinking on this is because i keep seeing the arguments again and again on the marriage bashing for and you bring up a good point too is like listen if you want a long relationship with a woman marriage you're gonna have to deal with the marriage uh, yeah, it's like I used to talk to Albert and be like, I don't like house music. And Albert, like, all the hot girls like house music. I like house right. music now. <laughs> so it's like, it's the same thing. It's true. You go you go where the women are. The women are at the marriage store. But here's how, the, other so day, I, I, the other day I went to a Taylor Swift cover concert. Jesus. It was a girl playing an, a computer. It was, a, it was an iPod. An iPod oh with Taylor God. Swift videos on it. I go, Brent, Brandon, we're going. I go, why do you want to go to this? I'm like, it's going to be 450 <laughs> women and us three. Yeah. Sure as shit it was. If we had several groups of girls look at us and be like, why are why you guys are you here? here? What is going on? I go, I'm going to be honest with you. Listen, yeah. I came here to find a wife. And this is like coming to America. Start, start, I feel like it'd be the best pool yeah. of girls. Here. Start two conventions. Start the marriage and why it still matters convention and start the marriage. Do we need it anymore? And see which one the women are at. Yeah. Right. I mean... So my answer for it was looking at my, my own personal selfish desires versus, which I'm not going to lie. It was hard to find the, the pros versus the cons of marriage of like divorce, taking all your money and whatever. Like I mean, after your kid, divorce, it go, goes did through, it go okay? Totally fine. See, there you go. So you had a nice I, one. I did that as smooth and as easy as possible. So there without whole, Jared's like, I'm so good at getting girls. I'm even good at getting rid of them. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> say, say what you want. But, but also I think that comes down to like knowing Obviously, you can have a messy breakup and messy divorce or whatever. And maybe, like, for the most part, I'm always pretty amicable when I've, with my exes, when breaking up. Even the divorce was like, it was literally one Zoom trial thing or whatever, and then we're good. So I didn't get the whole messy thing that a lot of people, you know, talk about. You know, knock on wood, it'll never happen again. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to my first divorce. So yeah, we, you'll get there. You got yeah, there. I'll be you got some time. 10 to 12 years. But <laughs> what it comes... Thing. It's a nice run. It's a great run. What, nice. what it comes down to me was, if I want a family, an actual family, that means I want children who are not going to be born bastards. They're not going to be like having to explain them to their other friends. Why is mom and dad not like actually together? Why are they not a husband and wife, right? Why is it not an actual family unit? Why are we not actually mentally, legally, everything completely joined together? Because once you have kids, so if, if I, we're not gonna have kids, I don't see the point of marriage, honestly. But my, once my kids only come to the argument to that is you got a 50, sh 50 50 shot of it ending up that way anyway. So I don't think that's a great argument for it, honestly. It could, but like, but that's should you, you, you want to at least get the 50% shot. So I'm not gonna put myself to societal standards because that's like I'm right. going to, I, I like to think if I'm gonna put my mind or, you know, real passion in something, I'm gonna make it work, right? Whether it's, with women, whether it's business, whether That's it's whatever point. the case might be, whether it's raising, having a family, 
I don't want to put myself up. Well, I'm going to go by industry standards. Like, no, I'm going to go by my own right. set of. Standards. So you're basically they, like, I already got divorced. So now the next yeah, one's got to so stick because I'm going to get my 50 50. If, if I'm rolling the odds, <laughs> like, you know, why not? Well, they you're we're more optimistic than ever. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're, here's the difference. Here's the other side of the coin. You need to play right. devil's advocate here. 50% divorce or 50% of marriage ends in divorce. But those guys that are getting divorced do not have your acquisition power of replaceability. So if I'm a guy who can't doesn't have many options and I got one option and I was able to trap her, I was able to put the freaking thing on her. It's different for Ned who lives in Wisconsin and has He's like, What am I gonna do? Yeah. It's like if I leave Linda, there's four other girls in this town. <laughs> you know that Ned's with Linda, by the way. That's right? that's oh yeah. Ned Ned, Linda. Ned's definitely with Linda. But you're not Ned with Linda, you're Jarrett. So and that's, you know, I think that you're, you know, it's again, it's a Chris Rock thing. It's like you're only, people are only as faithful as their, the options that are presented to them. A hundred percent. There's, I, I think we had a joke about this. Like there's no one fucking happier in their relationship than two disgusting, fat, ugly oh, yeah. couples who are like, that's the dream. I'm, yeah, it's like, I, there's nothing else I can get. This, anyone will put up with me. Yeah. And she's like, he's going to put up with me. It's like, thank you. Right. Appreciation. Like, like, like the idea of cheating is like, ha, okay, go ahead. Like, like, like the hall pass. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, yo, you think you, you go? Sure, go ahead. Go to Applebee's and yeah, go figure it out. Go game, figure it right? out. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm all with that now. So and so I always thought that here is the the kicker: is abundance means nothing when you have clarity. Meaning, when and we talked about this on on the podcast a year. You so you remember this? We were on a podcast. I think it was like a Halloween or some shit like a year ago, whatever. Where I was like, you know, I'm thinking about I want a girlfriend and whatnot. And both of you kind of sat me down. You're like, all right, write it out. Let's get exactly what you want. Stop wasting time on this sure. shit. So I put together an entire spreadsheet. I fucking geeked out. Has all the metrics, all the stats, yeah, everything like I want. Yeah, not go to extremes or anything. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to keep it even killed. Yeah, right in the middle. And, <laughs> and but this, this helps me because like, yes, could I get another girl? Absolutely. But am I going to find, and maybe one that checks the box is a little bit better. Maybe she's higher in one category or right. another category. But what do I want to put together another list for three days? You know, right. that's another, <laughs> another, that's a big time suck right in the middle. Uh, right. Yeah. But be that, clarity, you have a good situation. Clarity. Honestly, it's like, why should I go out and try to find anything else? I, I got it. I got someone who checks all my boxes. who's exactly what I want. So why the fuck am I going to a cheat or look elsewhere? Yes, I can have abundance. But that means nothing when I'm like, I have already got exactly what I want. Let's just let this run now. That's good. My only counter argument to that is obviously your boxes now are a lot different than your boxes were 10 years ago and might be 10 years from now. It's my only counter argument. Well, that's the whole point. That. Well, as in a relationship, so it I think to that's, grow dude, with that is the hardest thing that I've learned as an elder millennial just person. The amount of boxes that I still have with me from eight years ago, it's like maybe there's Even two or three boxes. Even three left. years ago. Yeah. I look at myself three years ago and like, what I need is so different now than when I was 35, 34. And it's like, people are, that's what I think when people get married at like 19 and I'm like, they're yeah, like, this is my first yeah. rest of my life. I'm like, yeah. you don't even know who you are. You have no idea who you are. Like, that's the hardest part is, and you need somebody I think that is comfortable evolving and adjusting with you. Maybe that's why. That's like, the point of a good relationship is you have shared mission, shared values, shared goals. And as you evolve, they evolve with you. And if not, then thank God we got our 10 year lease policy. Because <laughs> I know that like whoever I get with now and my lifestyle today is going to be very different than my lifestyle in five years. So I might find a perfect partner for Albert Destroyed in, in February of 2024, but she might not be the perfect partner for me in February of 2034 when I'm 48 and my, my life is completely different than it is now. So that's the hardest part, man, is like, you know, you got to find something built to last, you know? I mean, look, the grass may always be greener, but as long as you water your yard, you'll keep it green. And that's kind of how I've always looked. Like, I can always try to be like, yeah, let me find something better. Let me find something else. Let me find something new. Let me find something whatever. But I, at least in my situation with, with Anna, with the girl I'm dating, I look at it as I have gratitude. Like, I have appreciate The two things I've always said with the most important relationship is appreciation and understanding. And I get to appreciate being with a girl that literally checks all the boxes I'm looking for, who shares my passion, shares my ideas, whatever. The the I, I mean, I can go into it. like the Jewish background, the 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 want to get with other girls, the the keeping me on my best, like whether it's my fashion or whatever the hell. Like someone who's just got my back and all that. Like I can go through every single piece of it, but once you have that, 
It's like, I've been on the other side. I know what being single, like, like I've done the party thing. I don't want to go back to that. And I think as we get older and older, it's like, why not just appreciate and enjoy what you have versus I got to go through the fucking. So he, uh, here, here's a big problem with that is it circles all the way back to the beginning of the conversation, which is having the skills to go, you know, kind of choose your mate. Because the grass is always greener thing applies to like guys that settle. So like for Albert, like if Albert ends up with a short brunette, the grass will literally always be greener anytime right. he's looking at a tall blonde. Yikes. But if he if he stays true to himself <laughs> and he actually ends up but what if with I evolved to like short brunettes? No, so it's never gonna happen. That's what I think. You gotta be honest with yourself, it's never gonna happen. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But, but behind uh, every hot girl. But here's the thing. This guy was tired of having sex with her. But here's the thing. He will never, ever stop liking tall blondes. So at least if he does right by himself and he marries a tall blonde, he can at least have a comparison of that's a hot tall blonde, but I also have a hot tall blonde. So the grass might be greener, but it's at least the same type of fucking grass. At least you're dealing with right. the same situation. Because if he ends up with a short brunette, every time he goes out, he's going to be like hot tall blonde, hot tall blonde, hot tall blonde for the rest of his life. But can he still be like, no, I'm serious. Taller, taller blonde, blonder blonde. <laughs> well, but again, then you're dealing with the same type of grass, at least. The grass might be a little greener, but it's the same fucking Kentucky blue, man. He has really fucking me up here. <laughs> really At the end of the day. Oh, that's why I roll my eyes. Anytime Albert brings home a fucking short brunette, I'm just like, oh, yeah, what's your name? Yeah, yeah what's cool. I'll really luck. remember that. Yeah, good fucking luck. I mean, yeah. it's just. But we're meant to spread the seed. Men are always going to get tired. What the tired. hell are you doing at my house? <laughs> Well, take it easy yeah guys are like we're, we're wired that way right so like oh boy no matter who you're gonna be with i mean let's put it this way the girl you get with or hook up with or date or whatever she's never hotter than when you first see her that first awareness of course. right like when you first see her you're like i don't know what it is but there's just something she's got the, the football you're chasing yeah. her and it's like oh my god she's so hot and then it could be literally an hour later and you're like she's all right <laughs> like, like it's it's crazy. And generally we're the opposite generally at first right. the girl's like i don't know what this guy's really about oh yeah they're not invested and in us yet of yeah. and then later on it's like this is the guy that i need you know so it's like it, same thing same thing with sex it's like we're never hornier than like right before sex like we gotta right. have it uh, women are never hornier until after sex right like i gotta go fucking nuts and it's like well um i get an interesting message here that i think ties in the idea of how men change with what their interests are later in life and the difference in men and women. You mind if I share it here for the audience? Yes. So, Brandon. Oh, direct I, readout? I love this. So, I got direct this text readout. from a friend of mine. I'm going to leave him nameless. But he said, hey, bud, my dad needs two strippers for March 9th. He wants to pay them when they leave for them to do lesbian stuff and for them to try, try not to nickel and dime him. Are you able to help me with this? First of all, I love that I, people think that I'm the person to contact for yeah. the strip. Yeah, I love that you're the guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me cut. Let me like. Second of all, how honest are white people? I will, I will not say who this friend is, but how honest are white people with their fathers that the yeah. the guy would ask his son, yeah. son, can you give me two strippers to I, do lesbian stuff? Son, son I need two non stingy strippers. <laughs> yeah, who don't nickel and yeah. dime me? Because apparently he goes, his boys are coming to town and they live for naked ladies, but they're what? <laughs> He goes, their boys are coming to town. They live for naked ladies. Oh my their God. wives prevent it. Pops just wants to show them a good time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> good, good old Pops. Oh, my God. Like, that's incredible. Uh, that's, that just shows me like. You never change? Uh, yeah. Even as you get older. So my buddy's, you know, his early 30s. So I'm assuming his dad's, you know, late. But seriously, our birthdays are coming up. I mean, if you got the tonight. <laughs> yeah. but... So, Another number one, one it's hilarious. People think I'm the person to contact for this. strippers. Yeah. I don't know why I'm the guy. And second of all, yeah, like. It just never leaves you. Because I thought, like, eventually I thought, like, maybe one day when I'm 75 years old, I'll just stop looking at, like, a hot girl and be, like, impressed. And I, and I, and I can feel about it. I feel like, proud of myself. I'll see older women now, like, older, older. And I'm like, oh, I, could, I could see myself attracted to her when I'm 60. Yeah, like, that's, uh, you got And that, this is the year for therapy. We're getting there, man. I'm 38, buddy. So I should be able to look at, like, a late 40s woman and be like, she's attractive or late, early 50s, whatever, you know? Because eventually you're not going to just be attracted to 25 year olds. Looking at late 50 year old women. Early He's doing 50s, projections, early man. 50s. He's doing projections. I'm like, she's a hot 50 year old. He goes, how think, many, how, think many, well, how many 50 year olds have you been with or plus? I mean, I don't really have the list on him. <laughs> you can't count off. He goes, tell, I do, tell me I, when to stop. I do, I, do he goes, I do it for practice for when I'm older. I do, tell me when to stop. Do, <laughs> he goes, I want to know what the biology is like. I do uh, very palpably remember uh, 
that I was hanging out with uh, a girl. Do you just I, like bring inshore on the date? Like what? How does that work? I was hanging out with a girl when I was in my late twenties, maybe thirty. A girl or that's a woman? That's and a, yeah. she was forty eight, and I was like thirty, maybe. And Brandon called her Ronan forty eight. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. yeah. Forty eight Ronan. I was like, uh, I was like twenty eight, maybe or thirty at the oh, time. Oh yeah. The older women are great, man, and I think that that's a good thing. And we just started calling her Ronan. Yeah, Ronan. So what would she be now? She would be 58, maybe, I guess. She had her up. Or maybe yeah. 55. That's good practice. That's good practice. Yeah, like, like, get back in there and see. You understand your partner will be 48 to 58 one day. I'll be 60, 70. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be just happy I'm getting out of bed at that point. Like, who if, cares? If, I'm going to be almost exactly the same at 60 years old. Shenanigans? Yeah. I mean. Here, here's a really important th one, though. So you have this that he doesn't have. You guys are similar age. Right. He's 38, about to be 39. Right. Does he have to start lying about previously been married? I think he has to start saying he's divorced. Otherwise, I, I agree. otherwise women are going to think he's uncatchable. I, I really think. I think you have that going I got for you. I divorce card and yeah. it helps. Yeah, no, 100%. I really do. Because they're divorce like. Divorce no kids is a dream for a 32 year old. Yeah. That's literally. Women are out there. You're like, I want a nice 40 year old man. Divorce no kids. You're, you're a prime situation. But if you haven't been married, now you're a problem. I mean, you're always going to be a problem, but now you're on paper I mean, in this market, it's more understandable, but maybe that makes sense. Here's a no, question. 100%. Just, just play it out. Just be like, yeah, I was married. You know, wish her nothing but the best, but, uh, you know, that was two years. I'll never get back. Now I'm back on the market. You're going to get a lot better because reception. You just seem like, what is this? It becomes like a man child syndrome. We're like, oh, yeah. great. What's wrong never with settled. It? Yeah. Now, here's a real question. What's the best, most attractive reason to a girl to have been divorced? She, she died. She died. Oh, oh, God, God, God. Tell widow. We all agree, widow. We both know she died. I'm a widow. Course, I guess we're a widower. Of course, yeah. widow. And, and you ran into the burning house Literally, to try yeah. to save her. Yeah, like, like a shark was eating her. There's you nothing you can do with that. Killed the shark. I get that. Let's Obviously. go a step further, God, though. Yeah. Let's put a ring on your finger and tan around it so it looks like it used to have a ring on it. Every I'll go stages. Yeah, I'll go. Everyone knows <laughs> widow's the best. Sorry if you're a widow. <laughs> but I'm saying for actual divorced. First off, Charitable did you want to be the one who divorced her or did you want to be divorced? And what's the reason? For oh, the that's an easy one. I didn't want to buy a fifth house. I'm too rich. <laughs> too rich. I think it's better if you left the wife than okay. left you. But oh, now, of course. Why? Because oh. now she'd be like, well, why'd you leave right, her? So this I'm is still too sexually adventurous crazy. This is something crazy. This is not good. I probably shouldn't admit this on air, but it's fine. I'll hey, just it. do it. Oh, man. Oh, you can't get it out. This is great. Do just it. Just do it. Do so, it. Do it. I, you know, like I was watching The Bachelor. I watched The Bachelor. I don't mind. Um, no spoilers. And there's like, this girl's like, yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> this girl's like, by the way, that's a whole nother thing. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to that. Next, next week, we're going to know. Next yeah, episode. So this girl's like opening up to the guy in the show. And I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> now that I'm in my 30s, I'm more accepting of vulnerability and emotions and shit. Get it out. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> so, Classic delay. And he's so, like, uh, how do I word this? Right? No, no. So I'm just trying to explain to you. I think it's good when somebody shows vulnerability. I think that's very important. But there's a thing that girls do sometimes, and I wish I didn't feel like this, but I'm just going to say it. And when a girl's like, oh, my previous relationship didn't work because he was unfaithful to me, I kind of hold that against the girl. Yeah, of course. That makes sense. You know what I'm so saying? So that 100%. literally did not answer the question. What is the best reason you could tell a girl why you got divorced? Oh, I know. I just, I, I just disregarded your question. went to something <laughs> okay, cooler. All right. As long as we're on the same page. Like, now you spit it out. Just spit it out. I don't. I mean. Oh, you're asking. I'm I thought, asking, I thought no, you had the answer. Yeah, I, no, I don't. I, I mean, I'm good. I'm not like, Jesus. I don't have to answer everything. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm curious what you guys think it would be. Because a lot of times I would say, like, you know, we just went different ways. Both of our careers just got in the way. Well, you don't want the, the girl to think that she left you, right? Because then that makes, I think that that lowers your perceived value. 100%. Here's what really happened. And I think it's a good answer. And I think it's played well. But I, I'm sure there's a better, like, perfect answer. And that is our with, our, with her new job, she worked days, really. And I was working evenings. So we had no time for each other. And we absolutely just grew apart. Drifted apart. We drifted nice. apart. Yeah. And it was amicable. We were still friendly about it, but we realized it was more like being with a roommate than a wife. And I refuse to settle for that. Yeah. I'm sure there's a better... I'm not saying it's the best answer. That's pretty good. I'm just saying, like, this is literally what happened. And girls seem to, like, get it and understand or whatever. But I'm sure there's, like, some and perfect... Here's the thing. Answer. is Anything that you say about a previous relationship is going to come back and be in the back of that girl's head, right? Right. So if you say we drifted apart... 
somewhere in the back of that girl's head is going to be like, well, what if we drift apart? Maybe right. put in more effort. So if you say something along the lines of, I still had a tremendous sexual appetite and she didn't, now she's still going to have that in the back of her head, but uh-huh. she knows how to fix it. We get you're into weird butt stuff. And like, like this, so but that's what you said. Like, I gotta talk about the it's, weird. It's sex. a really good point. Setting a good precedent. Yeah, term. yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, we broke up. Like, that was of this my thing. point with the whole infidelity thing. It's like, right. if the guy, if the girl tells me that a guy cheated on her a bunch, I'm like, man, maybe she doesn't. Like, I don't know. Is she? Not, she's not into stuff. She, maybe she she's not good sexually. Does yeah. that mean like? Yeah. You know, I and, and I and I wish I didn't feel like that. I wish I was just yeah. We, we do not support though. victim shaming here, but yes, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I I get it because you are wondering like, all right, what happened? Like, maybe he was a douche. Maybe he was a complete scumbag. So, like, you want to be since, honest? Be honest. Since but... I, I recently went on a date with a girl, and I kind of like dug her, and then like things are going well, and then she's like, I had to leave this state because my ex boyfriend was like, almost stalking me, and then like he just showed up to like, and I'm like. This you're, is a good indicator like for yeah, You're like, this is this I'm like, good. this girl's got yeah. something good going on yeah. when this guy's going crazy. Yeah. Like, if a girl has some stalkers, that's a yeah. good thing. I'm like, she's got, it's like something about Mary. Yeah. He's you know like, what I'm a of vodka must be to die for Yeah, I'm like, this guy's going across the country. people are willing to break, break yeah. like, laws you. to go I'm get it, maybe no. that goes with, maybe guys should tell these girls you're on dates with, like, yeah, this girl's just been she stalking me. She obsessed with me. obsessed with me. She would, that's actually, yeah. Dude, that's nice. Yeah, that's a good thing. That might be, that might be. Because pumps your value. She's like, she couldn't get enough sex. It was like incredible. It was, it was really really. She wouldn't leave me alone in my life. Like, I just couldn't. Well, the fire is burning out. That means this episode is burning out. So until next time, guys, any any final words for you? Any words of pearls of wisdom? Tune in next week to hear our uh, criticism yeah, of The Bachelor. Tune in next week with Bachelor. Also, what I would love, I would absolutely love, drop a comment below on what you feel is the best reason to get divorced or the most attractive reason <laughs> you can tell a girl. <laughs> yeah, let me rephrase that. The, the best excuse you could tell a girl that's attractive why of why you got divorced i would love to hear the answer i'm sure it's out there so i'm looking at you don't guys don't say widow don't say yeah widow's obvious and sorry if you're you are a widow yeah until next time guys